Thank you, Kendall. And of course, we're asking you a very important question today. We're reflecting on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission many years ago, and the question that we posed to you, is there a need for a second TRC? Now, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation will hold public hearings uh, uh, this month, we believe, uh, the debates to mark the 20th anniversary of the uh, commencement of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC in South Africa. And uh, we would like you to get your, would like to get your thoughts on the particular question on the Facebook page as well as on the Twitter handle. I'd like to get your thoughts on that and the question that we pose to you. Do you believe that we need a second TRC. Now, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation will hold public debates to mark the 20th anniversary of the commencement of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC, here in South Africa. The public dialogue, reconciliation and betrayal is the first public event in the series to commemorate the TRC. The objective is to locate the current debate on reconciliation and its trajectory since 1994. But 20 years later, since the first sitting of the Commission, hundreds of political crimes, including murder, kidnapping and torture, remain unpunished, resulting in a blame game. The Commission's first public hearing on April the 15th, 1996, that's two years after the end of white minority rule, was a solemn affair, met with both hope and apprehension. The Institute for Justice and Reconciliation's Executive Director, Dr. Fani de Twait, now joins us from our Pretoria studios. Doctor, a very good morning to you and welcome. Good morning. Now, Doctor, as we reflect on the 20 years since the first sitting of the TRC in East London, I want you to take us back to your recollections of, of the event at that particular time. Yes, it was a historic milestone. There's no doubt about the significance of that day when the first hearings kicked off in East London in the Eastern Cape and the um, apartheid era victims were given centre stage uh, with the limelight of the world, not just South African media, but the world media on them, given the opportunity to debunk one of the oldest myths in South Africa, namely that uh, white rule and that apartheid uh, was beneficial uh, to this country and that it was a kind of benign development project. In fact, what these victims did was to show us the brutal underbelly of apartheid and evoke in the whole nation a, a kind of a, a moment of silence to listen uh, what these people, these brave uh, individuals were telling us. Talk to us about those emotions and what went through you as the commission uh, that was sitting there to hear these horrific stories that came through. How did you feel? Yes, I mean, I just have to say I was not a member of the commission, commission at the time. I was an interested member of the public. Mm -hmm. But it was very clear to everybody observing this that um, this commission would take on its own life. Uh, bear in mind that at that point nothing like this had been done anywhere in the world ever before. So we were inventing as we were going on. And the first thing that happened was that uh, we realized that these victim narratives, the stories of these people, were going to change the public discourse in South Africa forever. And when we actually then went back to the public in uh, the year 2000-2001, to measure public opinion, we could see the shifts in public opinion as a result of what these victims told us during these hearings. Did it change that discourse, uh, Doctor, and are you of the view that the TRC did achieve its objectives? You know, I think the TRC is often misunderstood and misremembered as well. We kind of look to the TRC now, um, Elvis, as a sort of one-stop shop to have solved all our problems. And quite clearly, no commission could have achieved that. What the commission was tasked to do, and what I think it did achieve, was to highlight and foreground the stories of those people that suffered most under apartheid. And that created a consensus in South Africa, amongst white and black South Africans, that apartheid was in fact a crime against humanity, that we could not go back to any form of racial discrimination and that moving forward was our only option.
Now, if you go to any conflict zone across the world, that sort of consensus is missing. South Africa was able to create it through the work of the TRC. That, in my view, was the big achievement. Yes, it had many failures too. I think it did not focus enough on gender and gender crimes and the fact that women bear a disproportionate brunt of the apartheid violence. It did not focus enough also on the structural dimension, the trauma of poverty, the trauma of forced removals, the trauma of just being black in South Africa, as um, we have heard since. So these are gaps in what the TRC did. But the core task of unearthing the atrocities, the political crimes of apartheid, did that the TRC did to some measure. Mm -hmm. If, however, I would submit, if the Gender Commission and the Land Commission and the RDP Commission, all these other commissions also performed to the level of the TRC, we may have had a very different debate today. Are you suggesting then that implementation was not at the core of this exercise? I think the implementation was fine until, until the Commission closed its doors. But then the recommendations that were handed over to government mm -hmm. was followed up, shall we say, at best with a lackluster uh, commitment. And therefore today, the big omission of the TRC is not what it did during the 18 months of its uh, life, but what happened or failed to happen since. So if you ask the question, should we have a second TRC, how can we if we haven't even implemented the first one yet properly? And so the question around uh, reparations for victims, the South African Coalition of Transitional Justice has been campaigning for this for a very long time, 10 years in fact, and we are only now beginning to get a signal that a government is in fact willing to take this uh, seriously and to sit down with communities to see what community reconciliation would look like. Similarly to prosecutions, I believe there should have been more prosecutions of those people who either snubbed the process or um, failed to gain amnesty during the process. In fact, two to three hundred names were handed to government. Only a hand, less than a handful of cases have been taken up. So, you know, the implementation has been poor, and I think that is where we are today re-evaluating re the legacy, and that's why your pertinent question is also born. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to ask you that question because it is a pertinent one in terms of the second uh, TRC, but Africa and the rest of the world envy what we have done here with the TRC. But in retrospection, if, if, if we can look at that, have South Africans, have we not become our, our very own worst enemies by uh, criticizing our own very good efforts by the TRC? I think we are not very good historians when we talk about the TRC. You see, mm -hmm. the TRC dealt with memory of apartheid, but now the TRC itself has become memory. And the way we remember the TRC uh, is not very accurate. So we blame the TRC for all the failures of modern day South Africa. And we all know those failures. We could list them. However, I don't think that's fair to, to focus that on one commission. That commission's job was to unearth the hidden atrocities of apartheid. And it did a good job in that. Uh, what it failed to do, I've already said. So it wasn't perfect, but it did a, a very good job at what it was mandated to do. Mm -hmm. So now, yes, I think sometimes South Africans do are overly critical, but at the same time, I just want to say I think what have happened subsequent to the TRC have been poor, yes. and we are right to criticize that side of it. Now, Doctor, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation will be holding public debates. Uh, what would you like to see come out of those debates? I'd like to see a more nuanced remembering of the TRC. I'd like to see us evaluate the, the actual legacy and achievements of the TRC more accurately and then say now, is it that the TRC let us down or is it in fact that we have let the TRC down by not following up on this commission uh, adequately? So for me, I'd like to see 
also a sense of if you ask should there be another TRC, perhaps there should be more seriousness about implementation of the first TRC recommendations. If some of that resolve emerged from these conversations, I'd be more than happy. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that was the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation's Executive Director, Dr. Fani Dutua, in our Pretoria studios. Now, as we, as we talk about this, we're also asking you that very pivotal question this morning that relate to the uh, TRC. Uh, we're asking you, should there be a second one? He answered the question, but I would like to know from you, what do you make of it? Do you think that we need a second Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Let us